Welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. It is Wednesday, which means wood signs. If you are interested in that or awesome DIYs, then make sure you hit that like button and you subscribe to my channel so you are always notified when I post something new, which is usually on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So today, you guys, we are going to be doing a reversible fall Halloween sign. This is the first time I've ever done a reversible wood round. So you are going to see me make a lot of mistakes in this video. And, you know, I contemplated even posting this video because I was like, there are just so many mistakes and so many like things I shouldn't have done. But then I was like, you know what? I want to show you guys that like there are ways to fix it. There's ways to work around it. And like, even though I have been doing wood signs, I don't always get it right. And I still make mistakes to this day. And it's just figuring out those mistakes and how to make the situation a better one. So with that said, Let's get into this reversible wood round DIY. All right, you guys, here is one side, our Hey There Pumpkin side. This is gonna be our fall side of the sign. And then we have our Halloween side, which says boo, and it's gonna be candy corn theme over here. Okay, you guys, so what I'm doing first, this is a 15 inch round. I know I usually work with the 17, but since I've never done this before, start in small. So I am taping this off where I, I want my um, drill to go, to drill my holes in the top of it. And you will see I'm putting, this is not like my Aura Mask, the expensive tape. This is just regular painter's tape. We're gonna take our drill gun, drill bits. Um, if I could find these drill bits, I'll let you know down below. And I will also put the size I am using as well. And then I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to measure straight across my line. And remember, these are glued panels of pine wood. So they have lines there for you. So make sure you take advantage of it and use it so you have straight lines. So I'm marking these off three inches in on each side. I think that measured like 10 inches across perfectly or something like that. I don't know. But I know for sure that I measured three inches in on each side. And now I am going to, I don't know why I grabbed that piece of wood, y'all. Okay, so we're going to take our drill and now you guys, this is where, I wouldn't say mistakes are made, but I drilled down on this side and it was totally fine. It did kind of flake the wood a little bit to stop that. You can always put um, a piece of painter's tape over it so that it doesn't split your wood. So I go over to this side and you'll see like my gun kind of like move side to side and I think that like it either hit like a piece of grain or wood or something but right away I, I knew I was already upset because it was crooked it was totally crooked and this is when I was like okay I should probably just scrap this piece of wood start over do it straight I don't want to show my viewers this and like look I'm like furious I'm like no this can't be crooked and it's crooked by like I feel a lot and then I was like you know what you're gonna go with it like we are not scrapping this wood we're not wasting it like we will figure out a way to work around it it's no big deal but look look at how crooked that is like hello so we're gonna work with it I'm using I don't know how to pronounce it you guys is which it's like I-S-P-W-I-C-H. I will link it. I love that it gives it this golden color. Perfect for what we're doing. Again, I'm using gloves, my microfiber cloth that I cut into like little squares. And I'm doing my front. I'm gonna stain my sides and I'm gonna stain the back. And then I'm gonna prop it up and leave it to dry for 24 hours. You will know when stain is dry because you can run your hand over it and it will not feel oily anymore. It'll just feel dry to the touch. So I'm just gonna prop that up on something and we'll let it dry. So here she is dry. Now you will see, 
I am looking for those lines. Sometimes you gotta look a million times, you gotta look it over, and you'll finally see them. See how I'm like kind of looking at a side angle because if you look on the side of this wood round, you can see the lines a little better. So I'm taping this off with my Oro Mask 233 Plus. Again, this is automotive tape. It is great for crisp lines, but it is expensive compared to regular painter's tape. So right here, I'm just trying to figure out how big I want my spaces to be because we're painting this three colors as you saw before. And I'm like, okay, I don't want my Hey There Pumpkin to be, no, sorry, this is the Boo one. Shoot, I'm all over the place, you guys. Um, I knew the middle was going to be orange, so I'm just trying to figure out like how big do I want that centerpiece to be. You guys can play around with it. Again, use the lines on this wood round as your guide. It is a lifesaver. So with this sign, you guys, I am trying different things, okay? I heard you guys. I know people try all different things. So I was like, you know what? This is going to be my sign anyway. So I'm going to go and just try different things. So I am actually using acrylic paint on this bottom half. Um, a lot of people have asked me if I used acrylic paint or anything on my wood signs. I've never used it. So I figured I might as well. So mistake number two, y'all. I have painted the sides. So if this sign was one-sided, it would be perfectly fine and I'd, I'd be fine with it. But the whole reason that I picked these two things for the reversible sign was because I, was, I thought they both would look good with this stain color and the sides should have just stayed the stain color. Does that make sense to you? But no, your girl decided to paint the sides. So. I figured that after I was completely done painting, but we will figure it out, okay? So the white paint, I only gave one coat. The same thing with the yellow. I liked that the wood grains were still peeking through with one coat and that you can see like the, um, like on the white, you can see where like a tree limb was. So I like that look. I like it looking rustic. I love wood grain. You guys have heard me say that before. Now this is still kind of wet. I did that because I wasn't sure with the acrylic paint um, how it would do if I let it dry like all the way. So this is after drying 24 hours. Remember, do not apply your clear sooner than that or else it will smear your paint, at least for chalk paint. So this is Hellsman water-based um, spar urethane. This is what I use. It is great for outdoor elements. I am using light coats of this. Make sure you get it all over your board. You'll know it's covered because you'll see all of it glossy looking. Okay, so now that that's cleared, now I know I won't get scratches or anything like that on there. And that's dried overnight. Now I'm moving on to the back and I'm super fancy. And instead of cutting the tape, I use my teeth. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome for my fanciness. Um, so again, looking for the lines on these. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with those sides? Whew. Okay. So again, trying to figure out how wide I want the middle part. And I want it a little lower. So the middle part is gonna stay stained. The top we are doing black. This is Rich Black by Folk Art. It is by far my favorite. I wish they had jugs of this stuff. Um, you only need one coat of this and it is jet, jet black. I love it. So using my little roller, now this is where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to go around the sides with the black. I thought that was the best option because it would look good with the candy corn sign too, since that will be Halloween theme. So that's what I chose to do. Look at those crisp lines. Oh, that makes me so happy. There is nothing better than taking tape or stencil off and seeing that there are no bleeds. Oh my gosh. See you guys how it looks matte and then you see the parts where it kind of looks darker black. That meant it wasn't all the way dry. So that's how you know. So here I am, there's my little bud. He's gonna try and feed me, I'm sure. Okay, 
So, sorry, I am totally not in the shop whatsoever here, but I am um, painting the sides right here. And, and I am noticing that it's not really, okay, it's on the sides. I'm trying to explain this to you. Hopefully I get a close up, but it kind of goes, see on like the front, the sponge, Ugh, I was so like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So you know what I do? Dry brush, so that it looks like I meant to do it. It looks rustic, and now it doesn't look like the sponge accidentally got on the front, so I'm taking the lightest amount. And you guys, remember, I'm only doing this because I messed up in the beginning by painting the sides. If I would have just painted the tops and left those sides just the same color, I wouldn't have had to take all these extra steps. But you know what? It ended up turning out super, super gorgeous. So again, I'm tapping whatever is remaining in my plate and then tapping this all over the, the sides, or sorry, tapping it on the paper to get like any of the excess off because I do not want big globs. I just want it looked like I lightly brushed it on there. I do that all the way around. See, especially like on the white, you can see it show up and it almost looks like a shadow, like looming over it. It's really weird, I don't know. Uh, probably should have sped this up for you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so this side, it did the same thing. So, I am going over again and I'm just dry brushing these sides where the sponge, you know, is showing on there. And I actually really, really, really like how this side, especially this side with the dry brushing on the side looked. It just gave it so much dimension. So much. So, we done there, which I probably, no, I shouldn't have waited. Never mind. Don't listen to me. All right. So let's finish off that. Now right here, I'm just taking a little piece of paint, paint, tape, you see that right there? And that's gonna be my guide because that is how wide I want my orange stripe to be. So I'm gonna go right on top of that and I'm reusing some of that tape that we used before because you do not waste that tape. It is super sticky and it will work again, I promise you. My only sucky thing is I have a dog that likes to rub his body on everything, so hair gets on everything as he's staring at me talk about it. All right, so pressing that down on our sides, and then I'm going to take some little scrap pieces of tape too, and I'm gonna put them on the sides, and then I'm gonna put a piece of tape over the black, if that, does that make sense? Okay, so let's get the sides. We don't want the orange going over the sides. We just painted all that black, you guys, all right? So I am just trying to figure out where, like the edge tapers off, and then just going to tape that down right there. Sorry, I should have sped this up so you guys get to hear me babble. I probably say this like every video I make because there's at least a couple little snips of videos that I'm like, oh, you probably should have edited that a little better. And there's Everett. He's very proud of himself because he's started dressing himself. So he always has to come downstairs and he'll be like, close your eyes. Um, okay, so right here I'm covering that black up and I'm putting it right, right on the line, like right below where that stain is. And then we are going to use pumpkin chalk paint. That's also what I used on the other side. And I am just gonna put this on with a brush. You guys, this took me at least three coats because the sides were black and it kept showing through, which usually I never have a problem with chalk paint. Chalk paint is pretty thick and covers a lot but this did not happen. So I had to go back, I had to dry it, go back, dry it, go back. So at least three total coats to cover those black sides that were peeking up through there. Um, on the other side, you guys, I used School Bus Yellow, I believe, in acrylic paints, the pumpkin, and then the um, Rust-Oleum Linen White. So there she is. 
super crisp lines, turned out great, no leaking on the side. Woo, super cute. And then I'm gonna go ahead again, let that dry overnight, like the black and the orange, so that I can um, put the rest on. Okay, so right here, I am measuring how big I'm gonna want that boo. So I measure vertically and then I measure horizontally. It's not always super accurate. Sometimes I cut these, which I did, and like this time measuring it, I went over to my machine, put in my measurements, cut it, and then was like, this is way too small. So it doesn't always work out, but for the most part, I usually don't have any issues with it. So this is my second piece of vinyl that I cut. And this is Boo. I will leave the fonts down below. And then of course the decals are will be available in my Etsy shop. So <clears throat> I'm using 651, excuse me, 651 permanent vinyl and probably just Dollar Tree transfer tape. And then um, make sure that you pull your decals back slowly. There's nothing worse than pulling it back and then getting overconfident and then it ripping. So here she goes. So again, you guys, I never use vinyl on my signs either. So I was trying this out because I've heard a lot of people are using the vinyl. So again, I was like, this isn't for a customer, it's for myself. So we'll go ahead and try the vinyl. And then that way I can see how long it lasts or if there's issues with it. Um, you know, cause it would be nice to offer something that um, maybe is less expensive if people can't necessarily afford the cost of like the hand painted signs. So let's see how this turns out. So I, I am rubbing this super good onto this wood and we are just going to peel that back slowly too. This actually adhered super well after I cleared this. So I was, I was okay with that, but then we are going to take our blow dryer and this is on hot and I'm putting this over because I want the adhesive on the back of this to get soft and sticky because let me tell you when I did this right away my vinyl started lifting so that's exactly why I was worried of using vinyl because if it's in the direct heat I don't want it bubbling or lifting or anything like that so this is just making me feel a little bit more secure that it's going to adhere to this wood and it is not going to be going anywhere. So I just ran that over it for a little bit, pressed my fingers on top of it just to make sure it was all smooth, no bubbles, no creases anywhere. And that is it for that side. I am not gonna put clear over the vinyl. I've always heard you don't do that but again i don't use vinyl on my wood very often so who knows who knows i guess we'll find out all right so this is after drying for 24 hours and we're going to do the same thing helmsman uh go with your light coats especially to be careful around those holes because you don't want it dripping down to the other side of your sign i was really happy with the shadowing on the side. I love it. And you know, see, and you know what I'm talking about? Everything happens for a reason. So this is Hey There Pumpkin. I also created this decal. I hardly ever purchase decals from like the silhouette shop and stuff like that. I always just usually make them myself because I'm picky. So I'm just eyeballing this and using the lines on the board as a guide. And then you guys remember too, just like I said, I use the 15 inch round cause I have never made this reversible sign before. So I didn't want to go big. So keep that in mind. Like if you're just starting off doing these wood rounds, start with something small, start with the 12 inch or the 15 inch. You know, you don't have to go so big right away. Um, so here we go. Look at how cute. Okay, you guys, this ribbon, $2.34 from Walmart and it is such great quality. It is so cute. They have the best ribbon out right now. So do not cringe or yell at me, but I seriously took this whole nine foot thing off because I've never done this before. So I didn't know how much ribbon I was gonna need to do this, but you guys, has this been simple or has it been simple? Okay, 
we are just feeding the ribbon through and you can do it a couple ways. Like you can just tie it in a knot and then just leave it hang like that. Or I thought an even cuter way would be to tie it in the front with a bow and then the back will be your hanger. Does that make sense? So I fed the ribbon through and now I'm just tying it in a bow. Don't worry, I'll use all the excess I cut off in another project. But look at how pretty this ribbon is. Oh my gosh, I love it. And I will put in, I need to measure, um, I'll take it out of the sign and then measure how long I ended up um, cutting these. But it looks so cute. All right, that's it you guys. Let's show you. Let's show you the front. Look at, ooh, I love it. Look at that shadowing on there. I love this, you guys. This will be a great product to sell. Um, the 15 inch, actually, this is the first time I made a 15 inch one, and I really like the size on the door. It's super cute. Would be great for inside use too. There's backwards, look it. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you with the bow on the boo side. So you guys, I hope you learned a lot from this video. I hope it inspired you to try some of these out. I hope it inspired you to keep trying, even if you're failing at some stuff. And I don't even wanna say failing, forget that word. You know what, If just keep on going with your bad self, okay? Never give up and I will see you guys again soon. Make sure to like and subscribe. Bye y'all.